Always great to have with us uh, my friend Paul Callen, CNN legal analyst and former New York City homicide prosecutor. Great to see you. Always good to my be here. My hands are cold because yeah. we keep the studio at uh, 26 <laughs> degrees. So yes. Just so you know that. All right. Hobby Lobby. Yes. Um, I, I, before we get to what, how the uh, various justices weighed in and, and, and based on that, which will take wild guesses, or you will, uh, I might too, on uh, where that case might lead. Um, what's your feel about about the case? I mean, t tell me what uh, what what it what the, the main issue is here for the owners of that great little company. You know, it's a very strange case, and and it's got that name Hobby Lobby, yeah, yeah. so it doesn't sound like a very serious right, uh, situation. Right. But it's most serious. Hobby Lobby is a very small family business, or at least it was founded as a small family business. They've got a lot of employees now, and. They have a problem with Obamacare because the problem they have is that they are required to cover contraception if they offer insurance for their employees. And one kind of contraception they have a particular problem with is something we call the morning after pill. Mm -hmm. And they're opposed to that because they say their religious belief is that life begins at conception. Right. And they and consider that, that an abortion pill. That's right. right. So they're paying for abortions mm -hmm. as a result of a government mandate. And they say that's unconstitutional and it violates something called the religious uh, uh, Restoration Act. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because uh, it, that was um, brought up by Justice Kennedy, who um, who was most considered will be the, the deciding vote here. And he, uh, in uh, something that was encouraging for the plaintiffs, said, "Well, what if uh, if the government said you have to pay for ab abortions?" And then Justice Thomas, from what I read, interjected and said, "That's already what they feel they're being asked to do." That's right. So that was a key, I think, a key exchange. If if Kennedy grasped that and heard that, because I don't know how he could overlook that and make that what if kind of comment. But okay, so um, I mean, this differs completely from the uh, sisters who are, who are suing the government. This is not a religious institution. This is a private, family-owned, as you said, business. Um, so, so the government is saying, well, corporations don't have religious rights. They don't have a soul. All this kind of cockamamie analogy in my point, from my point of view. Um, do they have a valid point that there's a huge difference between you know, the, the uh, a religious institution or someone affiliated with the religious uh, working and the, the, the owner of Hobby Lobby. I, that's sort of an escape clause that, you know, if the court wants to not face the central issue here, and that's whether the government is uh, placing a burden on the exercise of true religious right, belief, right. yeah, they can say, oh, well, it doesn't count here because it's a corporation. That's an escape clause. They kind of used that. Roberts kind of used that in legalizing Obamacare originally, right? right? He said, well, we're not going to view this as a problem with the Commerce Clause because it's a tax, it's a tax yeah. right? So maybe they use that as an excuse. I don't think they will, though. I think they're going to take a more frontal approach on it because it's really it's a hard question because there are so many different kinds of religious beliefs in the United States that traditionally the Supreme Court has said they kind of throw up their hands usually and say, well, the government can't require you to practice a kind of religion. But, you know, if one religion has drugs uh, being used, as some, by the way, religious right. uh, Indian Native American ones do, yep. and others yep. require this, the government can't get involved in that. So Scalia has even said that. We can't be, uh, you know, banning everything because right. some religion bans right. it. Right. So they kind of keep their distance. And in the end, they look for one thing. They, they say there has to be strict scrutiny, or what I call, you got to have a really good reason. If the government's going to tell you that you have to do something that will violate your religious belief, you got to have a really good reason for that, to support that. And I'm not so sure that they meet that test here. Um, you know, where does it say that the government can require businesses to supply certain kinds of contraception. Right, right. And, not why, just and why only for women and not for men? Exactly, uh, exactly. It, it, but see, you see, once they went down this slippery slope of saying the government can compel employers to supply uh, you know, health insurance, right. that wasn't enough for them. Yeah. Then they had to say, yeah. and You're, we're going to tell you what, what kind of health it? insurance. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So now, you know, this thing is just uh, so, so you, so you one think, problem after another. You think that they have a, a decent chance of uh, the plaintiffs of winning the case? No, I don't. Despite the fact that I think it's ridiculous that this whole thing. By the way, I think this whole Obamacare. Boy, throw, me a, throw me a curveball. I just well, swung I think in that, this. Yeah. I think this whole Obamacare thing has been designed to fail. So that in the end, they're going to come back and say, well, it's the fault of the insurance companies and we need government insurance, single payer insurance. Because when you look at all the problems there are, whether this thing's going to fall oh, I apart. Agree, but
but the court and we're never but the, gonna go but back. The court won't say that. Well, no, yeah. but but see, the court here's here's why I think in the end, the court will go against Hobby Lobby. Roberts kind of set the course. I mean, he had a very easy way to say this was an unconstitutional law, and he took the escape route. Okay, once he's taken that route, he's committed to this law. He could have put an end to it at that point. You could see that these sorts of things would be coming down the road. So I say Roberts is going to look for an excuse to justify his original decision upholding Obamacare. You think Obamacare. Roberts is going to go against Hobby well, Lobby? No, is that I, what you know, you're saying? I'm, all I'm saying is... You can only is, guess, but is that what you're guessing? He may very well. He did, wow. he did it in the first instance. And, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, Kennedy, of course, is the swing vote. Right. Everybody's assuming well, he's, four conservatives, right. four he's liberals. Right, he's the swing vote if Roberts is, uh, is conservative. Well, yeah, but what about Roberts? Yeah. How did Roberts vote last yeah. time? All okay, right. All right. so if he wants to uphold his prior vote, he's got to vote in favor of the liberals on this vote. Very interesting. All right, let's move along and uh, talk about this uh, case. Um, they're calling it groundbreaking. Leave it to New Jersey, who has uh, this the toughest anti-bullying law in the country to begin with. And now a, uh, a Superior Court judge says that uh, two school districts in, in Hunterton County can file suit against students who bully their peers. And by extension, the parents would be sued as well. I, I mean, you know, what's bullying? I guess by the definition of the law. I mean, I, I, to me, this is shocking. It's shocking. Well. I, you know, I always get in trouble when I talk about this. No, because, go ahead. No, well, I'll tell you why I get in trouble. Because, listen, everybody in theory is opposed to bullying. And it is true that with the Internet and everything, bullying can take place in a much more harmful way maybe than 25, 30, 40 years ago when I was growing everybody up. Everybody bullied okay? back then. But you know something? Yeah. In the end, life is about learning how to deal with a bully, okay? Because you're going to face him for the rest of your life. And... We now are, and I can understand, all right, maybe you want to ban things being posted on the Internet, and you can find ways to do that. But these laws now have, you know, school districts now monitoring every interaction between kids. If they insult each other, one is a bully, and he's going to get thrown out of school. I know. It's frightening. I have a kid, 14. I tell him, watch what you say. Not that he's a, he's a great kid, but watch what you say. And then I hear the President of the United States saying, and I don't know if you remember this, Steve, but when this bullying, I remember everything you ever oh, said. Right. Go ahead. Well, when this <laughs> bullying legislation first came along, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody was kind of in favor of it, all right, he came out and said, "I'm in favor of it too because I was bullied when I was a kid." Okay. Yeah, now I'm that. watching yeah. that, saying, yeah. "He's the commander in chief." Yeah. I wonder if. Putin is listening to that, okay? <laughs> so I don't want the commander-in-chief to say, well, right. I was bullied too and couldn't handle it. I need legislation to protect me. So, you know, I think we have to find a middle course on this. These kids have to be protected. But let's keep the courts out of this. You, you, I mean, you, really. You know, high school athletes in New Jersey, and I had the guy who was overseeing the whole program, and, and I was shocked at how he had no answers for me. Um, we have a governor who justifies his uh, you know, being uh, abusive or aggressive with people and telling them to shut up and sit down and say, hey, my mother was Irish, my father was Italian. Well, let's have a kid give that excuse if he says something that's out of line. Hey, my mother's Irish, my father's Italian. The governor said that. But and they have referees and officials uh, and umpires listening. And if they think they hear a, a homophobic, uh, ethnic slur, whatever, they have to report them to the, 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 uh, the uh, um, uh, Civil Rights Division in New Jersey sure. if they think they hear it. And if right. they think it was that kid. And then I said, to them, well, what happens to the kid? They couldn't give me an answer. Right. That's how insane it is. And if you read the facts of this case, you know what this, I mean, the facts of the case are there was a kid who was overweight and he got insulted about his weight. Now, boy, you got to, you got to learn how to, how to go after a bully who insults the way you look, well, look because and, you're going to deal with it for the rest you of your and life. I, neither one of us, I, I have a kid. I don't want to bully. You wouldn't want your kid to be bullied. And we but no, it's a horrible thing. It is. But, but to, to, to ruin a kid's life, and give him a record and everything and sue him, the parents. They're because suing of his that. parents. Paul Callen, okay, CNN pleasure. Legal Analyst, Steve Malzberg Show. Give me five is next. Don't go away. We don't just talk about the news. We talk to those making news. This is the Steve Malzberg Show.